Christoph's story, chapter three, Miss Finch gets it wrong. The next day it was raining. At playtime they had to go into the hall. Children came running up to Christoph. They wanted to see his scar. They wanted to know who had shot him. They clustered round him like dogs waiting to be fed. He felt a bit scared and he was relieved when Miss Finch appeared. She was carrying a notepad and pen. Christoph's going to tell us how he got shot, Miss Finch. Tell us, Christoph. Slow down, she said. Do you want to tell them, Christoph? Christoph looked at their hungry faces. They didn't want to listen to Miss Finch. They wanted to listen to him. Even Jeremy and the rats were standing there waiting for him to speak. Christoph felt important. He didn't feel scared anymore. Yes, he said. He told the children how he was in the house with his papa and mama when the bad men came. They looked really scary. They were dressed in banana leaves and they had chalked their faces white. They carried knives and spears and they burst into the house. They told my papa that they'd come to set him free. As the words poured out of his mouth, the school hall vanished. Christoph was back in his own home in Rwanda. He could see the bad men as clearly as if they stood there before him. He saw his mamma cowering on the bed. He felt the sweatiness of her hand. He knew there were bad men. He wanted Papa to say no, but Papa didn't. Papa went off with them. Mamma told me there were soldiers. Soldiers, said Pete, they couldn't be. They were, Christoph insisted. Papa went with them, he had to. Then they came back. This time they were wearing their uniforms. And Mama said, run, Christoph, run. So I ran, but one of the soldiers saw me. He fired at me and I fell. He fell to the floor, clutching his side. Did it hurt? Yes, said Christoph. Did you go to the doctor? I couldn't, we had to hide. Then he told them how the night went red with flames. The soldiers had set fire to his house. Why? Because they were angry with Papa, said Christoph. Why? Did he rob a bank? asked Pete. No, Christoph said angrily. My papa's a good man. The soldiers are bad. Papa won't do what the soldiers tell him to do. He ran away from them. So the soldiers burned our house down. Why didn't the police stop them? Police, soldiers, soldiers, police, he shrugged. Same difference. Same thing. No difference. The bell rang. Sorry, said Miss Finch. She stopped writing. Christoph, You'll have to stop there, the bell's gone. Everyone line up now, please. After school, Christoph was impatient for Papa to come. He wanted to tell him all about it. When at last Papa came, he said, Papa, I told the children how I got shot. Yes. And I told them about the soldiers in the war. I showed them how the soldier shot me. He dropped on one knee and squeezed the trigger. And then how I fell. He dropped face down to the ground. That was the bit he liked best. Papa, I want to be a storyteller like Barbie. Why not, mon petit? If you work hard, you can be anything. He saw Papa smile, but there wasn't any sun in Papa's eyes. They looked cloudy, the way the sky often looks in England. At playtime the next day, Miss Finch said, Christoph, I want you to stay behind for a moment. Don't worry, you're not in trouble. She put some papers in front of him. Will you read this to me? They were stapled together like a book. Christoph felt a sharp pain in his chest. The bad spirit had got back into Miss Finch. It's too difficult, he cried. He hadn't even looked at the words. Try it, please try it, pleaded Miss Finch. He saw a funny little smile on her face. It's a fantastic story. It can't be, he cried. It's a story in a book. A story should be kept in the head and told from the mouth. That's what Barbie says, and he knows about stories. He's a storyteller. He pushed the papers away and leapt out of his chair. This is how you tell a story like this. You have the story in your head, and when you tell it, you use a big voice or a little voice, and you tell it with your hands like this. And when you finish, the story flies back into your head, like a bird going back to its nest. Oh, said Miss Finch, but this story is different. Try it, Christoph, please try it. 
All right then. Christoph gave a big sigh. He sat down by Miss Finch and looked down at the papers. But he had only read a few words, slow words, when he felt his heart begin to thump. His eyes filled with tears. The words on the page grew fuzzy. This is my story, he cried. You've taken my words. I know it's your story, protested Miss Finch. I wrote down what you told the other children and I haven't changed a word. Last night I typed it up and printed it out. This is for you. This is your copy. I don't need a copy, cried Christoph. I've got it in my head. He scrumpled up the papers and threw them in the bin. Christoph, I'm sorry, Miss Finch said. I didn't mean to make you angry. He pushed her hand away. You don't understand, he cried. Stories are alive. You mustn't put them in books or the pictures will go. That's what Babby says. I wish he would come. Je m'assouhète qu'il pourrait te dire. He burst into tears. Christophe, who is Babby? He's, he's my mama's papa. If only he would come. Where is he? In Rwanda, he sobbed. He couldn't stop himself crying. Miss Finch handed him a tissue. Christophe blew his nose and struggled to calm himself. Miss Finch was kind. She hadn't meant to upset him. She didn't understand about stories, that was all. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have written your story down without asking you, she said. Christoph gave a big sniff. You really do hate stories in books, don't you? Yes, they go slow, 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 it's boring. When Babby tells a story, you want to sing and dance and play. And sometimes it's scary and you feel sick or you want to hit someone. That's the way I felt when I heard your story, said Miss Finch softly. Christoph looked into the sky, her sky blue eyes. There was no bad spirit in her. There never had been. I'm sorry I threw it away, he said. Miss Finch was quiet. Christoph wondered if she was angry with him. She had worked so hard. She had tried to help him and he'd torn up her work and thrown it away. Then she said, Babby is right. Storytelling is very important. Why don't we do a class project on storytelling in the class? Yes, please, smiled Christoph. Do you think you could help me? He asked. Me? How? Some of the children have heard your stories. Others haven't. Do you think you could tell your story to the whole class? Christoph nodded eagerly. He could show them how he was shot. He was really good at falling on the floor bit. You don't have to if you don't want to, said Miss Finch. I want to, replied Christoph. Are you sure? Yes. When would you like to do it? Now, he said. Could we do it now? I don't see why not, smiled Miss Finch. Shall I make a tape recording? Then you'll be able to listen to yourself telling it if you want to. Christoph nodded. That wasn't the same thing as writing it down. When the children came back from break, Miss Finch said, we are now going to do a project on storytelling. Is there anyone here who doesn't like stories? No hands went up. What? Everyone likes stories? Yes. I like scary ones, said Pete. I don't, said Gemma. I like stories that make me laugh. If they're really scary, I feel sick. How can you be scared if they're not real? They're made up, aren't they? said Pete. Some of them are, said Miss Finch, but some of them aren't. I'm going to ask Christoph to tell you a story. Christoph, is he going to tell us about the war? He's going to tell you the story of how he came to this country, said Miss Finch. Come to the front of the class, Christoph. Christoph went up to stand beside Miss Finch. He saw rows of eyes. Everyone was looking at him. Everyone was waiting for him to speak. Over to you, Christoph, said Miss Finch. The words had gone. He felt panic spread through him. Without the words, there would be no story. What would Babby say? He had got the chance to be a storyteller and he couldn't find the words. He heard Babby's voice as clearly as if Babby had been there. There's a bad spirit holding on to your tongue. Open your mouth, push out the words and your tongue will be free. He swallowed, opened his mouth and forced out the words. This is the story of how I came to this country, he said. And that's the end of chapter three for today.